Hello and welcome to another section of this complete NestJS course. In this section, we are going to start working with the database from our NestJS application. So we are going to connect our NestJS application to a database and from our NestJS application, we are going to store some data in a database table and we are also going to fetch data from a database table. But before we do that, in this lecture, let's have a brief overview of how NestJS application is going to use a database and what database solutions is suitable to work with NestJS application. So far, what we have been doing is from the client, we send a request to our NestJS application. And in our case, the client is Postman, but a client can also be a browser, an iOS app or an Android app. But in our case, the client is Postman. So from the Postman, we are sending a request to our NestJS application. And a request will always be handled by a controller. So for example, let's say we are making a GET request to get the details of a user. So this request will be handled by the user controller. This user controller will take this request, it will do some processing and it will send back the response to the client. But it is also possible that before sending the response, there is some business logic which is involved. Now in controller, we don't write our business logic. If we have to execute a business logic for creating the response, then in that case, we use service. So user controller, it will call a method from the user service. And in that method, we will have our business logic. So here, since we want to get the details of a user, the user controller will call a method from the user service. And that method, what it will do is, it will fetch all the users from the user's array. So this is what we have been doing so far. In the user service, we had a user array where we created some user objects. And whenever a user sent a request to get the details of a user, we filtered that user using the user ID and we sent that user object back to the client in the response. So, so far, we have been storing data in memory in an array. Okay, so arrays are stored in the memory. And the disadvantage of this approach is that when your application will restart or when the server where your application is hosted, when that server will restart, you will lose all the data which you had in the memory. So for example, if I make a post request to add a new user, again, this request will also be handled by the user controller. It will send the user data which we have received with the post request to the user service. And what this user service will do it will add that user data to the user's array. And let's say after that, for some reason, we had to restart our application. When we restart our application, the application will go to its initial state. So whatever user we had inserted, that will be gone. So here, when we are storing data in an array, in memory, the data is not persistent. And same is true when we are going to make a request to get all the tweets or create a new tweet. So in a real world application, we don't store data in an array. Instead, we use some kind of data storage. So now what we are going to do is now we are going to add a database layer in our application for data persistence. And this database can be any database. It can be a MongoDB database. It can be a Microsoft SQL database. It can be an Oracle database, PostgreSQL, MySQL, any database. So now, whenever we are going to make a request, whether a GET request or POST request, again, the request will be handled by the controller itself. So for example, when we are making a GET request to get all the users, let's say, that request will be handled by user controller. And this user controller will then call a method from the user service, which is responsible for getting all the users from the users table of the database. So remember that, in your NestJS application, the service is the one which will be contacting and communicating with the database. The service is the one which is going to perform the database operations on the database. Any request which will come to our NestJS application, it will be received by the controller and any data which we have received with the request, it will be passed over to the respective service. And the service is then responsible for connecting with the database and performing CRUD operation like insert, update, read or delete. Okay, 
So important point to note here is the service is the one which is going to connect with the database, which is going to contact the database and fetch the data from the database or write data to the database. Now, as it turns out, service will not directly contact the database. For that, there will be another layer between the service and the database called as ORM. ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping. This is an additional piece of software, a package that will be installed on your NestJS application. And there are a lot of different types of ORMs that are available. And we will learn about ORM in great detail in our next lecture. But remember that ORM is an additional piece of software between a service and the database that will be used by the service to perform different database operations. So for example, let's say if we want to create a new user in the users table, the user service will first use ORM. This ORM is going to provide us some methods in order to work with database. So user service is going to use one of that method in order to create, update, read or delete data from a table in the database. So the service does not contact or alter the database directly. It is the ORM's responsibility to take the request from the service and perform the required operation on the database, whether it is retrieving the data from the database or saving data in the database. Everything is done by ORM. And here the role of service will be to pass the relevant instruction to the ORM. Relevant instruction like create a user with the given data or fetch a user detail with a given ID, etc. All these instructions, the service will pass to the ORM and the ORM will then perform that operation on the database. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are different types of ORMs that are available, but there are two ORMs which has a very tight integration with NestJS and that is type ORM and Mongoose. Type ORM can be used for different types of SQL databases whereas Mongoose can be used for MongoDB database. And I'll not be wrong in saying that type ORM has even a tighter integration with NestJS as compared to Mongoose. Even though type ORM offers MongoDB compatibility, but that compatibility is not enough. It misses on a lot of functionalities that is offered by MongoDB. But that is taken care by Mongoose. So whenever you are using MongoDB database as your database solution, for the NestJS application, it's better to go with Mongoose. But if you're using any SQL database like MySQL, uh, Microsoft SQL, Oracle or PostgreSQL, in that case, type ORM is the best choice. In this course, we are going to use two databases. We are going to use the MongoDB database and we are going to use PostgreSQL database. So when we will work with PostgreSQL database, there we are going to use type ORM and 80% of the course is covered with PostgreSQL database and type ORM. And I'll also show you how you can work with MongoDB database from your NestJS application. So there we will use MongoDB database and for that we will use Mongoose as the ORM. Having said that, you're not restricted to only these two ORMs. There are also other ORMs available as you can see on the slide like Prisma, MicroORM and SQLize. So you can use any of these ORM packages, but as I mentioned, we will be using type ORM and Mongoose in this course. Also, if you check the NestJS documentation, there you can find the detailed explanation with example on how to use other ORMs like Prisma, MicroORM and SQLize with NestJS application. But in this course, we will stick with type ORM and Mongoose when we will work with MongoDB database. But if you want to use any other ORM in your NestJS application, then of course you can check the documentation of NestJS. Now, as far as compatible databases are concerned, you can use any database as your database solution with your NestJS application. On the screen, you can see an example of few of the databases which you can use with NestJS application. But the list is not limited to only these databases. There are also other databases which can be used with NestJS application. And also these databases are compatible with type ORM and if you're using MongoDB database, there you can use Mongoose. And since these databases are compatible with type ORM, these are also compatible with NestJS because NestJS does not have any layer of compatibility with the databases directly. 
nest.js relies on type ORM in order to get the compatibility with the database. So since these databases are compatible with type ORM, or we can say since type ORM is compatible with these databases which you are seeing on the screen or other databases also, and nest.js relies on type ORM in order to work with the database, you can use any of the listed database here with nest.js application. As I said, in this course, we will be working with PostgreSQL database and also with MongoDB database. But whatever functionality we will write in the NestJS application, so whatever you are going to learn in the upcoming lectures, that can also be used for other databases like MySQL or Oracle, etc. So this was a very brief overview of how we can work with databases from NestJS application and which database we are going to use in this course. In the next lecture, before we start working with database, let's understand what is type ORM in brief. And after that, we will install PostgreSQL server on our local machine and we will connect our NestJS application to that PostgreSQL database. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.